Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is David Novak. So, the, the book that I've been reading most recently has been Stephen Runciman's A History of the Crusades. And when I decided to read it, I went online looking for editions, and I really wanted the Penguin editions. Um, I was hoping for nice copies. And it turned out, buying each of the three volumes separately put me almost in the ballpark of buying the cheapest set of uh, folio society books. Um, and so I went with the folio society. I said, well, uh, there's a, a good likelihood at this point, having read Gibbon's Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, there's a good likelihood that I may actually read this thing. And since reading has become my primary hobby in these days, I do not feel that I need to withhold myself from the occasional luxury. And so this was it. I still withhold from myself a lot of luxuries of this sort. Um, given my age and my actuarial status, uh, a lovely set like this will not be sitting on my shelf for very long. And I do believe that for me now, the value in a book actually lies in the reading of it, not so much in the having of it. If you're an active writer, uh, then there's good reason to have, a bo have books like this on your shelf. You can get up, you can pull it out, and you can make reference to something. Uh, I largely am not doing any writing and don't intend to. So a, a book now can be a, a cheap, old, battered copy. What's critical is, will I read it or not? Uh, so uh, this was a luxury I permitted myself. It's a beautiful edition. I put a video up, um, flipping a few pages of it to uh, show it. And I've been thinking a little bit about Folio Society books, and I thought I would show you my other Folio Society editions. Um, I only became of the Folio Society editions probably five years ago or so as part of my attempt to gradually read a little bit more. I took a sabbatical. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a show and tell of Folio Society books uh, today. About maybe five years ago, I took a sabbatical from Facebook, which I was really into and decided to read a bunch of Russian classics, and I did. I think I might have read 11 Russian classics or something like that. And I read a couple of Dostoevsky books, and my favored translator, I'm very loyal in this way, was David Magershak, who was... Um, Penguin's go-to man for their Russian classics for a long time. I had read his Gogol uh, Dead Souls years ago. And um, so when, whenever I uh, would go back to read something in Penguin, and I don't know that I ever actually did until I decided to read all, uh, all of these Russian books, I wanted David Magershak. And I think I did read some other of him, maybe of Gogol. But I, I wanted, I, I started with Crime and Punishment, and I wanted a hard cover translated by David Magershak. And the only one I could find was some kind of uh, a book club issued it. And the, the copy I got was not in beautiful shape, but it worked well for me. I didn't 
where I could, I didn't want to read the Penguin Classic because I, I think the um, typeface was too small. And then that held even more so when it came time to reading the Brothers Karamazov, which was the second book um, of Dostoevsky that I read. And it turns out that the Folio Society used the David Magershak um, translation for their um, edition of the Brothers Karamazov. And it's illustrated, you can see. Uh, just, just a lovely volume. And th this was the one I read, um, which I enjoyed very much. And I, my anecdote with the purchase of this was, I don't remember, when I look for a book, I, I, I look for it under all kinds of different ways. And this was a book that the vendor had mispriced. Well, not mispriced, he had mistitled it. I bought the book not even knowing if I was going to get the Brothers Karamazov, and I wish I had screenshotted what the listing was. But needless to say, when you searched for the Brothers Karamazov, the book would not show up. Um, and so as a consequence to that, it was not in line with the algorithm that's adjusting the prices for all these vendors. And so it was at a considerably lower price than, than the other editions, I mean, the other copies of this edition. So I took a chance, I, I ordered it, and the right book came. So it was, it was a, a happy experience for me. When I decided to read another Dostoevsky, I went with The Idiot, which also has been um, done in Folio Society. And this, this edition is absolutely gorgeous. It's illustrated. Um, let me just check. Charles Keeping is the illustrator. Um, and go around. Uh, I'll try to show you some of the interior illustrations. It, there's, I can't imagine a more lovely edition of this. Uh, let's see if I can get some. Uh, they're they're just they're just stupendous. Uh, th now this book I only read. Well, I was more than halfway, but I had not gotten to two-thirds of the way. And there was some scene with, I, I, I think I had to set it, aside, set it aside for some reason, then I picked it up and read some more. And There was a scene where all the characters got together, they were in a room, and it's your usual Dostoevsky assortment of uh, disreputable people and sort of the, the, the mess of poverty and... and ugliness and all of that. And I said to myself, I don't need to continue on with this. I've kind of had my fill of Dostoevsky after the first two books, which I consider are probably his best. Um, so I, I laid it aside and never went back. Uh, perhaps one day I, I shall, but uh, I, do, you know, I, I generally don't read more than a couple of novels by any one novelist. Maybe that will change if my reading continues to improve and I uh, run out of things to read otherwise, but I don't expect that to happen. So those were my initial um, reads in the um, Folio Society imprint. Then one day I was at the uh, Half Price Books and I came across this gorgeous baby. Now this is by M.I. Finley, who you know is like a god to me, the ancient historian. And I had no idea that Folio Society printed uh, this sort of thing. Now that I've grown a little bit more familiar, I understand actually that they do. They, pr 
they have printed all kinds of things. And uh, the world of Odysseus is really the book that put Finley on the map. He was uh, targeted in the um, anti-communist scare, lost his job at Rutgers. And had this book not been so successful, I don't think he would have been called to um, England, um, where I forget where he taught, uh, Cambridge or someplace. Um, Does it say where he taught? At any rate. It's, it's a lovely book. Set that, set Finley aside. Now recently, I bought The Hittites by A.R. Gurney. O.R. Gurney, sorry. Um, and this book has a little story behind it, too, which is when I was very young and just starting to take my first tentative steps to trying to read a little history. You know, I had, I had already read uh, Ancient History, Evidence, and Models by Finley, and, and I don't know what else I had read. I picked this up, but not in this copy. It was the Penguin edition, had a little red cover, and I have very clear memories of trying to read it on my lunch break at a job. I was had some kind of job going on at McCormick Place, the nature of which job I can't remember at all. And I tried to read it, and it was just so darned hard. And put it aside. Years later, I had a book purge and had, for reasons of space, got rid of a bunch of books, and that was one of the ones that I got rid of. And I grew to regret that I, I left that book behind. Um, I had no ancient history at all um, in my education. I had no clear idea of anything at all. And Actually, throughout most of my adult life, I have not had that. That's only slightly begun to change. Uh, last year, Michael K. Vaughn recommended a book on his channel, a, a, a textbook, Egypt, Greece, and Rome, by Charles Freeman, I believe. And it's a good overview of those areas in antiquity, and I read it, and it gave me my first sort of broad canvas look at some of that. And then uh, late last year and early this year when I read The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire by Gibbon, uh, I think I got a little bit more because, of course, Gibbon does not only talk about Rome, and in some instances he talks more about Rome's neighbors than about the empire itself. And so I've just begun to get a little bit more sense of some of these other kingdoms, uh, some of these other peoples historically. And I thought maybe it's time to attempt the Hittites again. And I went looking and I could not find that old red-covered penguin that I uh, used to own. And I, I was afraid of getting something that uh, would be inferior to that. And so I, I decided to go out and get a, uh, get a Folio Society copy. And it's, it's a beautiful edition, of course, you would expect maps and, and, and illustrations. Um, it's, it's nice, you know, that uh, old books particularly, uh, but folio societies as a, a general rule would print these things on, on a 
uh, as separate plates on glossy paper, which is, is the way it should be done instead of just within the text as is done now, I, I suppose because it's just a lot cheaper that way. So this is, this is on my TBR, hopefully in the not too distant future. Uh, we'll see uh, where where I get with that. This, alas, does not have a slip case. Um, now, I I really started uh, to read every day uh, in January of last year, uh, so January of 2022. But I I was already starting in the in the couple of months before that I was it was it was with January of 2022 that I decided well I'm going to log what I read and keep track of what I'm doing here and so that's why that date has become a, a pivotal reference point for me slightly before that in December in the box I came across Primo Levi's, if this is a man. Um, it's, it's a lovely, <laughs> a lovely edition. It was just in one of the neighborhood boxes. Perfect shape, alas, without a slipcase. Um, the, the illustrations are nothing to speak of. Uh, well, let's see if I can show you something. Uh, I mean, you might like them. Uh, I... I find that they don't do anything for me. And I, I enjoyed the book. And when I learned that it was uh, part of a duology, I guess you would say, it's, it's one of two books. And actually, there is a third book which touches upon the period, um, but not in a Folio Society edition. I, I looked for it, and I saw that it, it also was available in a Folio Society edition. So I, I bought it. And... Uh, another lovely cover. Let, let's see if I can show you the, the two two covers together. And this one is The Truce. Uh, I believe both books have different titles for the American versions. Um, uh, less, uh, less satisfactory titles, if you will. And this book I read in January of 2022. And actually, I like it better than, than the first book. Uh, the first book details his experiences in Auschwitz. And this book, which, if you've uh, done any reading on, you know, concentration camp life, um, there's, there's, um, a similarity to things. Each author has his own take on the experience. But I think unless you really want to become a scholar of those events, uh, you, you probably don't need to read too many of those books. But this was something entirely different. This uh, relates the author's experiences immediately after the liberation of the camps, and you had, you had persons, displaced persons, all over Europe, and no way to get home, and this accounts all of the, uh, all of the adventures, if you will, as he slowly, slowly, slowly made his way back to Italy. So it was a marvelous, marvelous read, and. The, the other book, uh, I can't remember the title of it, but there were select incidents, I think, from both books, um, which he, 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 he did not feel he could include in, in these books or he maybe just made cursory reference to. And he decided to put the, these individual anecdotes into a book of their own and as I say, I forget the title, but I, I, I also uh, um, got that in a you know some kind of cheap little paperback edition and read it. And it was a very good sort of way of rounding out having read these two 
a, a lovely, a lovely set of books. So there is, there are those. And I think the only thing that's left in my Folio Society um, collection is at the court of the Borgia. And this, here's, here's the, the cover. It's slightly smaller size than uh, some maps, as you would think. At the court of the Borgia. So being an account of the reign of Pope Alexander VI, written by his Master of Ceremonies, Johann Buchart, edited and translated by Jeffrey Parker. And let's see what, what kind of illustrations there are. Well, well, here's Lucrezia Borgia. And I believe I have a history of the Borgias, not a history of, uh, well, I guess it would be a history of the Borgias, packed away somewhere that was a book recommended by Steve Donahue, which I hope to get to again. Goodness knows when. I I may not live that long. Um, but if I do, at that stage, I will probably get to this. And the only reason I have this is that every once in a while, I'll do a search and see what kind of Folio Society edition is being offered up for sale for, say, $5, including shipping. And, and this was, I think it was four twenty-five or something like that, including shipping. And so, uh, you know, why not live dangerously? I gambled on it. And this beautiful book arrived. And who knows, I may read it and something serendipitous may occur. That's how it is with books. You just don't know what is going to happen when you open the covers on a new book. So that's my collection of Folio Society books. It's not something that I make a, a habit of searching for. I recently um, put in an order, well, put in separate orders for the um, history of Byzantium by John mm, something Norwich. N-O-R-W-I-C-H. I don't know how you pronounce his last name, but I know it's not pronounced the way it's spelled. And I really was lusting after the Folio Society set. Um, it's, it's also a three-volume set, but I believe much denser than the Runciman history of the Crusades. And the cheapest I could find was something like 125 or 135 including shipping, and I just decided not to. As I say, for me, the, the um, reading of the book itself is, is the, the main thing. Um, and I believe they are all Knopf editions, which Alfred Knopf was one of the better publishers. Anyhow, you know you're likely to get something of good quality in an Alfred Knopf edition. It's just a question of what condition the book arrives in from the vendor. Uh, so that's where it stands, though, with the Folio Society books that I own. I don't expect to be adding to them any anytime soon. It's not something that I uh, have as a goal. If I had known about them younger, and if I had actually been a reader younger, I could see trying to build a collection. But the way the environment is collapsing, it may well be on any given day, we all of a sudden find ourselves um, in a position where uh, we too have to become migratory transients, unable to carry possessions with us. And so given the state of the world today, placing your store in needless luxury items such as these perhaps is not the wisest thing to do. Uh, at any rate, uh, I thought that I would share all of my Folio Society 
books because I know that it is something other booktubers sometimes do. If I can, I will try to link uh, any booktubers that I've mentioned in talking about this in the description. Thank you for stopping by.